Shalom to everyone. I'm going to get into a, I would say, touchy topic. Uh, it's called enemy. And we're going to find out in this lesson who is your enemy. All right. Now, a lot of us that want to keep the law, statutes, the commandments, uh, we found out that we are the children of Israel. Uh, we know we we're going to stick out like a sore thumb um, when it comes down to this world. Um, in Job, it says the world has been given into the hands of the wicked. So we understand that there are going to be a few of us that's going to stick out. Okay. We're not going to deal with holidays. Um, if you're at a job, they're going to look at you like something is wrong or they're going to feel that you know you may make them feel uncomfortable because you're not dealing with what they're dealing with and sometimes people will may think that you are judging them because they are dealing with it which is good what i mean is you don't have to say anything it's not you it's your example that you're leading them with it's the spirit behind your actions so they're actually being feeling judged by scripture or by the most high that's what that's what it is all right so enemy let me just say this enemy you are your own worst enemy all right first of all first and foremost you are your own worst enemy there's no one that can be more worse of an enemy than yourself to yourself all right. Uh, no one usually on 99 percent of the time, no one makes a person smoke crack or or smoke cocaine. OK, there's you, you see it with your eyes and you follow the negative energy of the world. There is no one out here that made you smoke a cigarette and bust your lungs all over all up all over the place okay uh, you've seen it and you looked at it and you like the negativity no one has made you a drunk we are our own self infliction which is sin we people like to commit sin let's just make it very clear people like it it makes them in this realm, in this particular portal that we're in, in this world, make them feel good. So, hence, they do it. All right. Enemy is self hatred. Okay. As a nationality of people, when it comes to the children of Israel, we hate each other, which is self hatred. But on a personal level, I'm going to make this on like a personal level type video. Uh, those of you that like to commit sin and love it and like to backbite and talk, talk trash and get things stirred up, uh, you hate yourself as well. All right. Let me get into it. Let's get into the word enemy. Let's see what it means. Right. Uh, if you look up the word hate, which I kind of like thought I was going to change the whole motion of this lesson but it reeled it right back in uh, let's look up the word hate in the Hebrew so if you go to Hebrew number 340 you will see the word ayah a primitive root to hate as one of an opposite tribe or party like I said we show self hatred then it says hence to be hostile be an enemy so if you are not following the law, statutes, and commandments, you're not following scripture, you don't believe in Christ, then you hate the Most High. You are his enemy, and you are the, an enemy to those who want to uphold this book, the Bible, okay? Not saying that I am your enemy, or those of us that want to keep the statutes are your enemy, but you are our enemy, and you may not know it, all right? Uh, 7852 in the Hebrew for the word hate 
Satan. It's almost like Satan or Satan, which he is the progenitor. But Satan means a, prim a primitive root properly to lurk for, persecute, hate, oppose, self against. Then you have the word 8130 in the Hebrew for hate. Sovne, a primitive root to hate personally, enemy, foe, hate, odious, utterly. There you have it. So, to kind of like put things in perspective in this lesson, when you're out talking, uh, the, you know, the, the, the ones of us that want to like keep the commandments and you know we're supposed to be ministers and we're supposed to teach people you can't come at them like brawlers you have to as it says in Matthew 10 verse 16 be wise as a serp serpent and harmless as a dove you're going to have to be that way is because if you come out there brawling and talking to someone remember that they're under a spell they're seduced remember we were like that at one time if you come out there, look, you a sinner, you can't be, you going to hell and all that. Even though that's true, if they stay in that state, but you have to talk to them and show them that they have a chance to get away from it, and you be you, you be soft spoken to them. If it's a one on one thing, even if it's a congregation of people, you going to hell, you doing this, you you you, you, you blah, blah blah blah. You are not following scripture. You just as bad as that person. So. Usually what happens is, even if you do come at them wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove, some shall still offer you up to be handed over. Just like Christ was. He, was, he didn't curse anyone out, but he was still handed over. So the, the problem with that is, it's going to be your, saint, the, the, your, your, your family. It's going to be your family members, those of you that have the same deoxy deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA they're the ones that's going to offer you up to be delivered and have you killed because they're not going to think that they're doing anything wrong it's going to be to the point where it's going to be well something wrong with him mentally he's crazy uh, can you check him out and, and you know something wrong so now you're in an institution somewhere because you was delivered by your own people that supposed to be your family uh, so that's why Christ um, states in Luke chapter 14 uh, any man that come to me and hate not his father or his mother cannot be my disciple but I'm going to go through that scripture in a few minutes let's go to Proverbs chapter 17 verse 15 alright so we, we're, we're going into the information the lesson is called enemy Proverbs 17 verse 15 He that justifieth the wicked and he that condemneth the just even they both are an abomination to the most high. So we are not to condone homosexuality. We are not to condone backbiting. We are not to condone or justify uh, drug addicts or drug dealers and, and prostitution and, and murder and strife and malice and backbiting and busybodies, tail barriers, which is someone that always got to yap at, at, about someone's information and things of that nature. We're supposed to reprove these people. Um, that's just the way it's supposed to go. But if those of you that think that you want to come against us, that want to teach and minister to you, you will be an abomination to the Most High. If you, if you, the ones that justify it and the ones that come against the teachers, you are an abomination. Proverbs 17, verse 15 He that justified the wicked, which means he that condones to the wicked acts of someone, and he that condemned the just, he that tried to talk bad about the just and condemn us, even they both are an abomination to the Most High. Like I said, I pulled this, that verse out in another video, but I, this correlates into this lesson now I'm going to get into the word hate for a minute like I said it links to the word enemy um, but hate itself is a good thing as well when it comes down to righteous 
righteousness. Because you have to have, once you understand that you are your own worst enemy, now you know that there is something else in you. I hope you all pay attention. Something else in you that's letting you know that. And that spirit that the Most High has given you is letting you know. Okay, let's go to Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Luke 14, verse 26. And it says, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brother and sister, yea, in his own life, also he cannot be my disciple. You cannot be Christ's disciple. You cannot be a, a true Christian. Because the Christians, or the disciples were called Christians at Antioch. If you're, you're not a true disciple or Christian, if you cannot reprove these people and come away and, and let them know that you're wrong based on this scripture, you're not a disciple. I don't care how many times you've been shouted in the church. I don't care how many times you've been spoken some tongue. I don't care how many times you've been read scriptures and preached. If you cannot justify the wicked and tell them that they're wrong and they need to come away from it and you teach them, then you are just as bad. You're an abomination. That's what, you, that's what Proverbs 17 verse 15 says. Luke chapter 14 verse 26 is telling you, Christ is saying, if you, if any man come to me and hate not his father, which means you do, you despise the sin that you're parents are doing you you look and you tell them look i can't deal with that anymore uh, I, I can't deal with sunday worship anymore um i know i'm under your roof okay let's say you young younger crowd uh even though you're supposed to obey your parents but there's a level of respect that they're going to give you anyway because the most high is going to lift their lift that yoke off of you so you can worship on, on the Sabbath because you're going to show them scripture how you interpret the Bible there's a way you're supposed to do things that's why in Matthew 10 16 be wise as a servant and harmless as a dove if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brother and sister yea in his own life also he cannot be my disciple you cannot be the most highest you can't be Christ's disciple you can't He's not going to allow you into his king, into the kingdom of heaven. He's the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father except through Christ's examples. That's what that says. That's what that means. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So in thine heart, if you hate your brother, then that's an evil scenario. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So we don't suppose to hate our brother. And it says thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So we don't want something bad, punishments to come against someone. We're supposed to uh, show meek, meekness and kindness uh, to that person let's go to Matthew chapter 10 verse 22 now when you start teaching like this and ministering to people and not following this and that slowly but surely certain things in your life is going to diminish uh, I, you know that's just the way it's going to go. Some people say, well, no, I think if you believe, if you read the Bible and start reading, following the scripture, you're going to get prosperity and you're going to get a bunch of money and all. If you have money, it's there's nothing wrong with it. But if you start worshiping that money, then it, there's an issue. But when you start coming against the grain that Satan has laid out, usually nine chances out of ten, all your substance is going to be, is going to wither away. Matthew chapter 10 verse 22 it says and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake that's the reason why I said that and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but he that endureth to the end shall be saved no one is saved until the end 
But see, the church teach, the, the Christian churches teach that you're saved after you speak in tongues. That's nowhere in Scripture. After you speak in an unknown tongue, you're saved. That's not. That's nowhere in Scripture. You can, you can go to Acts all you want to. You can go to Acts chapter 2 and all those other scriptures all you want. Trust me, I've read them about 20 times. That is the interpretation of tongues, which is language. All right. When the tongues came, I'm kind of like going off, but when the tongues came down, the, the cloven tongues sat upon each of them. The Holy Spirit had to interpret that tongue. That's why it says, let me go there real quick. I know I'm kind of like going off topic, but since I say what I said, let me go ahead and get it real quick. Acts 2. And when the day I started the first verse and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto, unto them cloven tongues. So the, clo the tongues was there. They appeared first. Right. Like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. So the tongues came. But you remember, no one said anything. So the, the spirit of these tongues, the, the, the gift of tongues sat upon them. But nothing was said. And this is the reason why. Then it says, and, which is. In addition, plus, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. The reason why the Spirit gave them the utterance of the tongues that was sitting on them is because there were devout Jews and all the other nations were in that same vicinity and they had to prophesy. That's the reason of the language of tongues. That's what that was. It wasn't that they were speaking an unknown language and that was it. Of course, if you do speak in an unknown language, you're supposed to do that in a closet somewhere by yourself. All right. Um, that's in Corinthians. I don't want to get too far off this lesson here, but I just want to make it clear. It don't matter how many times you've been spoke in some tongue. If you, It doesn't matter. That doesn't give you entrance in the kingdom of heaven tongues are just a gift all right a lot of, of us already know that matthew 10 verse 22 and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but he that endureth to the end shall be saved so when you endure all these hardships that will come upon you not following all this and people trying to come against you and talk behind your back and all that they're considered your enemy when they're coming against scripture because you're following scripture Okay, that's the name of this lesson is enemy. Those are the people that don't want to follow the scriptures, even if they don't say anything to you. Remember the scripture says, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. So you can talk to them if you got to converse with a person because you're working with them or you have some type of business with them. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? You know, all righty. You can smile and <laughs> all right. It says there's a saying, keep your friends close, but keep your enemy close closer there's a reason why it doesn't mean you got to be in their face looking at what they do no this is how you know your enemy you keep them close by scripture you're going to know exactly what what could happen based on their attributes and their behavior because they they're not following this and you are so now you can understand how this enemy is going to act not saying that person but the spirit behind their actions all right, because anyone can be can come a, away from what they're dealing with. Matthew chapter twenty four verse nine. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. These are the ones of us that don't bow the knees to Baal. We're not going to deal with any of your ideologies. It's just going to be scripture, commandments. Raising up the tribes of Jacob, accepting the other nations. We follow the holy days, and that's it. You're going to be lift. You're going to be delivered up to be afflicted. All right, it's going. That's just what Scripture says. So there you have it.
Now, how should we conduct ourselves when we are approached by our oppressors or enemy? Right? Let's go to Exodus chapter 23, verse 4. Exodus chapter 23, verse 4 says, If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him. Now, let's just bring it up to date. Ox or an ass. These are work vehicles. If I see an enemy of mine that they don't like me for some reason and they're my enemy, they hate me and they're talking behind my back and all that. Um... Someone may have stolen their vehicle. Uh, you've seen it. You know it. You know the tag number. So you call it in and, hey, um, my, my neighbor's car has been stolen. I've seen I'm behind the person that stole the car. Okay, you type call in, you give it to the officer, and then what happens is your, your, your enemy, so called, is pissed off and angry because somebody stole their car and. You walk past the neighbor's house and don't say anything because they don't want to hear your mouth anyway. So you go past and now you've done a good deed, right? And now uh, the car just shows up and then the officer be like, hey, yeah, um, your neighbor said that he's seen your car driven by someone else, a suspicious person. And. You know, we called in the tag and it was, yeah, we got the person and everything is settled. So now your so called enemy, right, comes and knocks on the door. Hey, that was, uh, I'm astonished. I really appreciate that. I, I like that car and, you know, it gets me back to work. Now he's not your enemy anymore. You see, that's the reason why Satan has it set up now as everyone has to have this. Well, you do this to me, well, I'm going to do this to you. <laughs> You gonna move my trash can? Well, I'm gonna move your trash can. Stupid stuff, man. People are very emotional today. It must be the bisphenol A, the BPA in the water. Uh, uh, people are very sensitive. Uh, you, you could talk to someone now and yeah, you talked about my shirt. They ready to cry somewhere. You know, so there you have it. That's what the scripture means. Exodus chapter 23, verse 4. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. Now, this is very tough because, see, a lot of people don't understand that the Old Testament is interchangeable with the New Testament. So I don't understand that, you know, how people following the Old Testament be like, yeah, we, we're the Israelites. We're the only ones. And, but you're supposed to help your enemy. Numbers chapter 10 verse 9 Numbers chapter 10 verse 9 And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppressed you then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God and ye shall be saved from your enemies. So all we have to do is uh, blow the trumpet Now I'm blowing the trumpet There are other speakers and teachers we're blowing the trumpets of course, this was a literal trumpet that you have to blow because there was a war about to break out. But based on this setting in this generation now, we supposed to speak out and let people know that we are being oppressed and now it's time for us to come out of this oppression. And if ye go to war in your land, against the enemy that oppress you then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God and ye shall be saved from your enemies so the Most High is going to remember your works faith without works are dead so don't, don't tell me about hey man all you got to do is have faith oh so all I got to do is have the, the word faith on my shirt no faith is a word but you have to put that word into action. Faith is a verb. It's not a noun or a adjective. <laughs> okay, let's go to Psalms chapter 41, verse 11. Psalms 41, verse 11. By this I know that thou favoreth me, because my enemy doeth not triumph over me. So the Most High is going to favor you. In, in David's time, you know, uh, 
you do your work, you, you take care of things, the most high will favor you. Proverbs 24, verse 17. Proverbs 24, verse 17 says, Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumble. So the most high is telling you eventually your enemy is going to fall, but we are not to rejoice. Because remember, he created everyone. Okay, the most high created everyone. So he still had he's connected with with Nick with uh, I don't like to use human because I know that links to the word homo sapien, but we are mankind. So he created us. So he's still connected. He still have feelings for us. All right. Righteous feelings. OK, that's. Uh, Let's go to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 21. And this is the one that really kind of like really kind of had me puzzled. And when I first read this, Proverbs 25, verse 21, if thy enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. You see that because they are our enemy. We are not their enemy. So you supposed to show these people. See, let me tell you. This book, and I have to bring this back. I have to show that the the, the Bible is nothing but life. The Hebrews, the brewers, the ones that's going to stir this book into reality, is to be lights to the world. So we are not to be like the world. We are not to follow the same actions of the world, showing hatred and malice. We are above that. And that's why I should be trying to get the brothers to see that, say, it's just an Israelite doctrine. The Bible is not saying that. We are supposed to be a light to the Gentiles. That's in Isaiah 49, verse 6. Let me read it again. I like to read that scripture because just in case I have new viewers on on this media. Let me get it real quick. Isaiah 49 and 6. And he said, it is a light thing that thou should be my servants to raise up the tribes of Jacob. So we are supposed to raise up the tribes of Jacob. You're supposed to tell the, the North American, American Indian that he's from the tribe of Gad, uh, the Hawaiians, that they're Nephtali, the tribe of Nephtali, the, the so-called Negroes, they're the tribe of Judah, so forth and so on. And to restore the preserve of Israel. We are supposed to restore the preserve of Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. I also shall show you this light. Once you all are set up, once my son come, I want you to be a light to the Gentiles. That thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. So we are the most high salvation, which means that we are the saviors of this world. They base movies on our powers. We are lights. Okay, so we need to get off of that teaching about it's just an Israelite thing when the whole Bible is based on us helping out the other nations. <laughs> the whole Bible is we're the lights. So how can we just how can a light just shine in one little spot? One little spot. You don't think the Gentiles see that light and they want to come through? All right. Let me um stop ranting, I guess. All right. Let's go to, uh, I'm going I'm to read uh, Proverbs 25, verse 21 again. If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. He's, you're not his enemy. He's your enemy based on him. That person just being self-inflicted with sin. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Romans chapter 12, verse 20. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 20. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Therefore, if thy enemy be hungry, it's there again. 
you know, people may feel some kind of way about these scriptures that I'm going through, right? And now, based on this part of this video, uh, I guess you maybe someone don't wouldn't like what I'm teaching. So let's go to Galatians chapter four, verse sixteen. Galatians chapter four, verse sixteen. I am therefore become your enemy. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I'm using truth based on scripture. I'm using scripture. You can't say that I'm misinterpreting the scripture based on what I'm reading. It's literal. It says in Proverbs 25, verse 21, if thy enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. We are supposed to be a light to the Gentiles as well. It's right there. All right. I'm going to show you why the enemies have taken uh, Israel. Why is the enemy having their way with the children of Israel? Why do we always, why do we have this yoke of iron? It may not be a yoke of iron physically or literal. Now it's a, a mental yoke of iron. It's, it's, psych, it's a psychological yoke of iron. Let's go to Hosea chapter 8 verse 3. This is the reason why Jacob today, the children of Israel are being uh, the enemy is having his way with us Hosea 8 and 3 it says Israel hath cast off the thing that is good, now what is good? it's talking about the law the enemy shall pursue him, so eventually the enemy is going to pursue us he's, and he's been looking for that woman seed the one, the righteous seed of Israel, he don't the enemy is not tripping off of you 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 guys out there that want to deal with all your parties and like I said the holiday I'm gonna keep saying holidays your your parties your holidays your your all your sinful acts they give you money and everything so you can stay in that mind frame they're not worried Satan is not worried about you he already got you all right let's go to Nahum. Nahum chapter 3 verse 11 Nahum chapter 3 verse 11 it says thou also shall be drunken thou shall be hid thou also shall seek strength because of the enemy you're going to be seeking strength all right now let me tell you this is how you this is how our people the children of Israel seek strength you fill out a resume you get it you get your resume all together it's all tit tat, you know what I'm saying? All tight. You get it up there, and you, you know, you get a job, and you know, now they give you a, a high position, and you feel that you got some type of strength. But still, you're drunken because you're all over the place. You ain't treating people right. Why is this paper sitting here? Yeah, I'm the manager. I am this. You notice, and I hate to just put out people out there, but it's sometimes embarrassing. But we all can vouch. When it's always a so-called black person in in high statute, a lot of times they treat their workers like dump on the majority side. Not all, but a lot of times we know we can vouch for this. They treat our own when you got someone a high official with they 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 treat us they 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 are so high minded all right Israel hath cast off the thing that is good the enemy shall pursue him that's Nate that's eight that's Hosea three, eight and three excuse me let's go to Nahum again chapter three verse eleven thou also shall be drunken thou shalt be hid thou shalt Thou also shall seek strength because of the enemy. So you're going to be seeking the strength. This goes down to another level of where you won't be able to make it. You're going to be trying to look for a job and it's going to be hard for you because of your enemy. All right, let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 9. This is what Nahum is talking about when it says drunken. Isaiah 29 and 9. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. 
They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. So they're all over the place, crying out, trying to make it. So the Most High is going to allow you to cry. It says, cry you out, which means speak, preach, preach, talk, talk. Yeah, man, they ain't doing this about, they ain't doing that right. <laughs> then you're in tears, so cry you out and then cry. They are drunken. So now you over here and, well, maybe I can try this Black Panther thing. Well, maybe I can get into this double uh NAACP movement or uh let's try the civil rights thing or well maybe I should be in Islam well maybe I should be a Christian well maybe I should be a Prince Hall Mason or well let me just try this Catholic Church uh, I don't like that well, let me try this ag ag agnostic Jewish religion you we all over the place in all these different beliefs well let me try this uh this uh, this mother earth nature thing here stay yourselves and wonder that's all we you know what the most high said you know what you stay over here in wonderland then yeah you stay over here in wonderland cry you out and cry since you don't since you don't want to deal with me anymore all right my people stay out in that wonderland you're going to be crying out looking for things and it's not going to happen. So now cry. They are drunken. So now you're all over the place in ideologies. But not with wine. They're not with, it's not a, a physical, a literal wine that they're drunk with. They're not staggering because of a strong drink. But it's, they're staggering all over the place trying to find that spirit of the Most High. But he put us in Wonderland. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 51, verse 21. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 21. Therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. It's telling you again. Therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. The most high, if you read I, the, the rest of the chapter, this, let me, let me get some more scriptures on that so you can get some clarification. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 21. Verse 22 says, Thus saith the Lord, the Lord and thy God that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again, but I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee. So eventually, that's what's going to happen to the other nations that afflicted us, which have said to thy soul, bow down, that we may go over and thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. And that's what's going to happen. But we have to get out of Wonderland. Stop being drunk spiritually. Matthew chapter 13 verse 25. If you go to Matthew chapter 13 verse 25 it says um while you were asleep, the enemy sowed tears among you as a parable. So if you're sleeping, you're drunk. The enemy has sown tears. That, that's what that parable is about. He showed a literal form parabolically linking it in to what's happening to the children of Israel. While you were asleep, the enemy sowed tears among you. While we were asleep, the enemy put things there to keep you in this docile state in this mind control frame now they have did it to the whole world but it was the target is still us but they have to show the whole world that we can do this to you too because you all have tried to help these people so it's deeper than just looking at just uh, all these uh, underground news report is talking about how bad it is. It's the reason why. Now, what's going to happen to your enemy? We're not to fight them on a personal level. We, we're not to throw fists in their face. The most high do that. Alright. Let's go to Exodus chapter 15 verse 6. 
Let's, let's see what happens to your enemy. The destruction of them. Exodus chapter 15 verse 6 says, Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. So that's what's going to happen to the enemy. The Most High is going to send his son to dash the enemy. That's how we know that. Let's go to Romans chapter 8 verse 34. Romans chapter 8 verse 34 says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So he's make, making intercession for us. So therefore, when we take on this, the Holy Spirit, we're taking on the attributes of Christ. So we're at that right hand. There's going to be an army <laughs> that's going to come against the enemy. Okay, Exodus chapter 23, verse 22. Exodus chapter 23, verse 22 says, But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto them. So, I mean, excuse me, unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversary. So if we do what the Most High say, the Most High is going to be an enemy to them. All right. Let's go to Revelation chapter 19, verse 12. Revelation 19, verse 12 says, His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself. Now, his eyes were as a flame of fire. It's talking about Christ. So we know that he is at the right hand of the Most High, as we read in Romans chapter 8, verse 34. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself, but he himself. Now, this is the mix-up. When it says, but he himself, if you are a follower of Christ, and you, and you understand, you're going to know his name based on because it's written in scripture if you link the word ishi in the Hebrew it's going to say Yishi, Savior or Yeshaya because we are as he is so when it says as he, only he himself we are not to be as man man is sinful and hopefully that makes sense all right, let's go to uh, Psalms chapter 8, verse 2. Psalms 8, verse 2 says, Out of the mouth of babes and suckling hast thou ordained strength because of thy enemies, that thou might have still the enemy and the avenger. When it says, steal the enemy, the Most High is going to stop that enemy. He's not going to be able to move. And then it says, out of the mouth of babes. So out of the mouth of babes, he's going to put his word in us. We're the, we're the babies. We're the babes. And suddenly has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. So because of thine enemies means that when we did hard bondage in Egypt, when we did hard bondage in, in this America, we're still doing hard bondage, but it's just on a consumable type uh, issue now. It's not something that you have yokes on our necks, but it's a, it's a, it's a psychological yoke, like I said before. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling has thou ordained strength because of thy enemies. Because of thy enemies, the Most High is going to put strength on us. That thou might have still, we're going to shut the enemy down. They show that, I like the movie, Tron, when the guy that created the so-called game and he came and shut that thing down. All he did was just touch the, touch the floor. When Christ touched the atmosphere and break it. Shoo, everything shutting down. Let's go to Psalms chapter 9, verse 60. Psalms chapter 9, excuse me, verse 6. Chapter 9, verse 6. Thou enemy, oh, excuse me, oh, thou enemy, destruction are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities 
their memorials is perish with them hmm, their memorials so when Christ had many crowns he's going to destroy the memorials hmm, what memorials is he talking about here let's see wow memorials the founding fathers and these people that so called you know you got Lincoln over here people that came over here and said the Americans and stole the country yeah uh huh we see you your memorials are going to be destroyed oh let's see here we have the 33 degree mason here in DC Albert Pike who started the KKK uh huh. KKK. K is the eleventh letter of the alphabet. Eleven, 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 thirty-three. Okay. Albert Pike. Your memorial is gonna fall, sir, and all those who deal with it. That's garbage. Now, let's conclude this. Let's go to James chapter four, verse four. And while you're turning, I'm going to read Psalms 9, verse 6 again. O thou enemy, destruction art come to a perpetual end. And thou hast destroyed cities, their memorials is perished with them. So this is written in scripture. If you, those of you that believe in the Bible, it's written that these people that came against us, put up their memorials, come against the other, the Native Americans, and put up the eagle and all these people. Yeah. It's going to be a perpetual end, and your your cities are going to be destroyed, and your memorials is in scripture. Conclusion: James four verse four. Ye adulterous, excuse me, ye adulterous and adulterous, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? So being a friend to the world is showing total hatred to the most high whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God there you have it we're not dealing with the world we don't deal with all the things that have been passed down through slavery and all the ideologies and all the so called holidays you are an enemy to the most high so since you are an enemy to the most high you are the enemy to those who want to follow his law, statutes, and commandments. This is my life, and I'll be doing this for the rest of it. Shalom.